Mela and Shahan died also both of them. And the women was left of two sons and her husbands. Let's pray. Father, yes, Lord. I ask you tonight, as I preach, use us, Lord, for your honor, your glory. May we be a blessing, may we help, be a help to somebody in this service. Help. Use us this night for thy Thank glory, and thy honor. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about tonight, we've, we've heard many, many sermons out of the book of Ruth. I've preached several in the last many years that I've been preaching. But tonight we're going to talk, we begin a study in the book of Ruth. And there's some things, some practical points that I, we can look at to help us in the child of God. I imagine we read about Abimelech and, and, and uh, his wife Naomi, how they left Bethlehem, Judah, Bethlehem. And they went because there was a famine in, in Bethlehem and they went to Moab. And we found out when they got there that some things happened. That some bad things happened. First, Abimelech died. Well, before he died, before he died, his his sons married to Moabite women. He died. Then his two sons died. And there, there Naomi was, her two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpha. And some things that transpired in this time. I guess, Brother Philip, if I was going to title this sermon, it would be this. The Tragedy of Moab. The Tragedy of Moab. Ruth and Esther are the only two books in the Bible that have, their, have women's names. The book of Ruth tells about the story of a Gentile who married a Jew and became an ancestress of the Messiah. The book of Esther introduces us to a Jewish woman who married a Gentile and God used this, used this woman to save the Jewish nation from destruction. From destruction, you read a study. I mean, we may do a study on the Kabbalah as it is. I don't know. But we see here, Ruth also begins with a famine, and it ends with the birth of a baby. If you study out the Book of Esther, it begins with a feast and ends with the death of over 75,000 people. If you notice in the book of Ruth, God is mentioned 25 times. If you read in the book of Esther, God is not mentioned at all in the book of Esther. If you read and study that out. But there's a lot of indication that we know God, but Esther did have it. God is not mentioned in the book of Esther at all. But in both books, the God's will was established, was, was done. In both books, it was it was it was led. It was it, it was instituted by the providential hand of God. It was. Somebody said one time, faith is not believing in spite of the evidence, but is obeying in spite of consequences Amen. or circumstances. There yet consequences. Both of these women serve as examples to all of us. And challenge us to be committed to God. Now let me tell you, in any, in any given minute, in any given day, something can happen to all of us, our lives, in a personal level. Yeah. It will cause us to get out of our God. Yes, sir. None of us tonight, you say, well, preacher, I've been saved 40, 50, don't matter how long it's happened. I have no idea how long you've been saved. None of us is exempt from something happening. But we see here as Amimelech took his family to Moab. Moab was a very hard enemy of Israel. He left Bethlehem and went to Moab to the land of idolatry. But we see here we're going to talk about the tragedy that happened in Moab. First of all, I want the first thing we need to bring up tonight here 
We've got to look and look at the unbelief of Moab of, 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 of Abimelech. We see here in verse five said it how the tragedy happened. Verse one through five it said it was, and I won't read it, but you can you go. I've already read it at the same time. But Abimelech and the famine in in Bethlehem. So they decided, he decided, instead of praying through his consequence, he decided to go and try to do it his way and try to change his situation. <laughs> Listen, if you do it on your own, you ain't going to make man no better. You're going to make them worse. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what happened here uh, with the Bimelech. If you read in the book of Judges, if you read the book out of the, in the book of Judges, it was not an easy time during these times. Because you study and see in uh, Judges 17, 6, he said, in those days there was no king in the Israel, but every man did which was right in his own eyes. Does that sound familiar to y'all today? Yeah. Well, every man done right in his own eyes. We're living in the same day like it was back then. And when the king of this world, who is Satan, he the prince, the power, the iron, the Bible calls him that. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 2 2, he said, We're in the time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the iron, the spirit that now work within the children of disobedience. So we consider the time of this time. Your faith. Is most tried in the trial and troubled time. Amen. Your faith ain't tried too much when you're going through everything you're going good with. Yeah. Right. But it's that time of famine in our lives that it'll be tried. And we see here in that trial, he that that trial of Bimelech did turn into a tragedy for him and his family. But we consider the time and the hard time. Also consider the place. He left Bethlehem to go to Moab. If you study the world, what Bethlehem means, it means a house of bread. He left the house of bread. God chose him that place to go to the land of idolatry. Because the Bible said there was no bread there was, there was no bread in the house of bread. It, it, it was a famine. <coughs> if you study and read out, any time you read about a famine in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it was because God was disciplined of certain people for their uh, judging because of their uh, because of their wickedness. I'll tell you something tonight, folks, so we can believe it or not. America's <laughs> under the judgment of God right now. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I believe Amen. it out my heart. Yes, sir. I heard folks say years ago, if the chicken is coming on the roof, and honey, they roofed him right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you that, uh, you know what? We, uh, we all people honor our, our, our minds on probably a November election. And we think, well, if, if Donald Trump gets in, it'll be better. Joe Biden gets in, it gets worse. I'll tell you what, ain't nothing going to change. There ain't nothing going to be no better to the Prince of Peace steps out on top of the floor and takes yes, it That's right, man. But look here. Even God, I will read if you want to mark any Bible written and get home, but in Leviticus 26, 18, and 20, it tells about the famine. He said, if you if you go against me and, 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 and just break it down, said, if you go against me and go against me, said, I'll send a famine and I'll judge the land here. I go to the grocery store sometimes. I went to the grocery store the other day. <coughs> went down the aisle with a sugar rather. Well, no sugar on it. I don't know. Like, well, there's sugar shortage on the side. <laughs> but you know, so I, I, th I thought, you know, how would be if you go to Walmart by the all shelf like that? Oh, yeah. It could happen. You know, last year, uh, the last year or this year one, it was told that the government, federal government, was going to pay farmers $4,000 an acre to not collect no crops. Did you know that? Mm. I know it might have been the cause of the drought. But it also may have another reason behind it too. Yes, sir. Maybe. Come and see here. It's not hard to see that God's hand, God's hand 
of digital is upon, uh, upon the nation we're living in tonight. We're still living in the greatest country in the land. Somebody help Amen. me. Amen. 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 What we are. That's right. But we see here, we consider the decision he made also. He didn't pray about it, Brother Mike. He didn't pray about what to do. The Bible don't even have no record of him praying at all. He just saw, hey, <coughs> it's a famine and I'm going to get, I'm going to leave. When trouble comes our way, there's one of three things we'll do. We can endure the trouble, escape it, or just trust God in it. If we endure our trials, that trial will become our master and will become bitter and angry God if we try to endure ourselves. If we try to escape this, then we'll probably miss the, the purpose that God has put us in the trial with the storm. But we see here tonight that if we learn to trust in God in these trials, the trials will be our servants. He'll work, it, it, it work, it work for to bring good for us. All things work together for good to them that love God, for them that call, to the call according to the purpose of the word of God said. But we see here the decision he made. The decision he made, he said, he just said, I'm going. How many decisions do you reckon people deny in churches and even Christians? Make without even consulting God about. Yeah. yeah. Right. Especially when it's when it's hard time. Mm -hmm. I told this story. Some of you haven't been here when I since I told this story. What you I talk, I've told this story several times over the last thirty years. We had a call one time. We got went through some bad financial problems back when I, I like that the church. Uh, well, that church just I had to leave that church. What I say. <laughs> but anyway, my income dropped real low. About to lose everything I had. I had an opportunity, Brother Phil, to get rid of my car and have a cheaper payment. I didn't pray about it. It sounded good. I said, I'm going to do it. Now, my wife, some of you men, some of you men be better off listening to your wife sometimes. Amen. Amen. I didn't get no amen out of them men, but I'm sure they got some dollars out of the women. Amen. Look. But I told my wife, I said, I'm going to get this car. She said, you're afraid about it. I said, I'm going to get the car. I was eager. And I made the deal. I'd already found it. I was going to borrow it by that cheap car. Had a man going to take up the for that car. I was going to make it clear. I said, I got it. The very day, brother, the very day that I was going to sign the paper and buy up and get that car, I pulled out the parking lot of my wife's of my wife's work in a car size so like. Mm -hmm. And the man that was going to buy the car said, I don't want that car now to be direct. Mm -hmm. And God said, uh-huh. And I stood there looking at that deed in that car and God said, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I've been a fool. Forgive me. Well. <laughs> See, sometimes we try to find the easy way out instead of waiting on God. Yeah. Amen. That's why he did. He decided he won't need any way out. And that's why a lot of us are tonight. We if we don't watch out for us too much. We like it, don't we? It does. Yeah. But we also consider his consequences. You know what was what Moab, uh, not Moab, you know what Emma, remember that problem was? He walked by sight and didn't walk by faith. Mm -hmm. He walked by the things he seen instead of the, the trusting in God. He wasn't alone in all of his folks. He wasn't. Do you walk by faith all, every day? What about when situations come in your way that you got hard decisions? Sometimes we have hard decisions to make it. And it's hard. I've often said this, and I believe it's the truth. Don't never make a major decision when you're down and low. Amen. Do not make because you'll always lean more to the flesh than you will faith of God. We need how do we how do we walk by faith? I tell you how we'll we will believe the promise of God, obey the word of God, and in spite of what we see, how we feel, what may happen. 
It may look like we're going to sink, but let me tell you what, even Paul told the men over there in Acts when they had that storm, when they were going to Rome, taking that fear before Caesar. He said, if you stay in the ship, you'll be saved. You'll be saved. Too many people don't want to stay in the ship and ride the storm, and they want to jump ship. That's exactly what we need to see here. You see, Abimelech, he made you on the physical instead of the, the spiritual side. And that's the way a lot of people do tonight. A mom and daddy, they want to take care of their young, provide for them. A husband wants to provide for his family. I know we got a bunch of people that don't want us, people that in our land that don't want to do that. And men that ain't taking their place on that. That's right. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people say, well, I want to provide for my family. That's good, but don't do it at the expense of losing God's blessing in your life by doing it. Like taking a job and keep you away from church. Amen. <coughs> or doing a job that's not honest. I know people right now tonight, Brother Philip, they was all it was in the hole. God was they was really in bad shape. And God blessed him. They begin to they get they begin to work and make good money. And now they're like old men the left. That's the will of God. Listen, I'm, t I'm, not t I'm, t I'm talking to you from experience in my life, too, folks. If in time of difficulty, listen to this, if we put God first in our lives, we can be sure He'll be take care of us. Take care. He'll either take us out of trouble or He'll break us through the trouble. Amen. One or two. Amen. He'll do that. Word of God tells us in Matthew 16, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Abimelech abandoned God's land for the land of the enemy. My, my, I'm tell you what, folks. But his consequences of making the wrong decision, it cost him a lot. It cost him some dear things in his life. He died in Moab. But you know what? He didn't go. He just went there. He just going to go there for a little while. He died there. And as he died, his sons and their daughters, uh, their wives and his wife, abode there 10 years. That's a far cry. He's just going there for a little while. Ain't it? Yeah. Many people have, have, have desired, did the same thing. They've done something. They said, well, I won't, be, I won't do this long. Before you know it, it consumes them. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened here. He died in Moab as far away from God as he, as he possibly could have been spiritually. Do you know one thing? You know how far Moab is from, here, from Bethlehem? 50 miles. And, and by the way, about five to seven miles long. There he, was, he, was, he wasn't that far geographically, but he was so far away spiritually. Yeah. I want to tell you one thing, friend. That goes to show you. A man or woman, boy, or girl can sit in the church house, go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, still be as far away from God as he was from Moab. Amen. 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 That's the truth. Amen. See, he, why, he, he allowed his son to marry Moabite Moabi woman. And God had done forbid him. God had forbade them over in the book of uh, Deuteronomy 23 3 for them to not to take any wives of Moabite women, but he lied and it happened. Tell you what, you, know, you get in trouble if you save. If you save and you marry a lost person, you're going to ask for trouble, honey. Yeah, amen. Myself, I'm a preacher and, and, and I, I, I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm too. Dumb. I, I wouldn't care if I never did uh, perform a marriage or a funeral no more. I really don't. Yeah. But I'm pretty particular. I don't marry people who've been divorced. I don't marry people with all the perfect savor. I don't do it. Because the Bible talks about that unequal yoke, that unequal yoke. Abimelech dies first, and all of a sudden his son dies, leaving three widows to weep in the land of idolatry. They, they, you see, they, what was so, so ironic about it, they had left Bethlehem and escaped death and when they got to got to Moab, they experienced death. 
I'm going to tell you what, friend. Can you imagine those three tombstones? I've got to mess him and preach out of this sometime. Three tombstones in my well. He left them there. You can't run away from your problems, folks. People try, we can't run away from our problems. He tried to run away. You can't run from far. When you go, no matter how far you go, that problem is going to be right there with you. Amen. Yeah. We can't avoid taking with us the basic cause of most of our problems. You know what bet the basic cause of our problem is? Is an unbelieving and disobedient heart. That's what it is. <coughs> but I didn't read these other verses, but you can you can read read them as I go. I'm gonna go on down a little further here. We well, see here, first of all. <coughs> The first thing it caused them to have a tragedy is it have the tragedy that happened in Moab was up was unbelief. But we see the second thing we're gonna look at you find out in, in, in over verses six to eighteen. Deception. They tried to hide their mistakes. Let me go with me. We'll take it. I'm talking about I'm talking I'm talking about the young now. Now Mimelet and the girl boys had already died. But let's look at verse 6. And she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had given his people and given him bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, her and two daughter-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And they only said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to your mother's house. The Lord dealt kindly with you as you have, the Lord dealt kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. And the Lord grant you that you may Find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed him and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And they only said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you why will you go with me? Are there any more sons in my womb that they may be that they may be your husband? Turn again, my daughter, go your way. For well, I'm too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have, hope, uh, I have hope, if I should have a husband, also tonight it should bear sons, would you stay for them till they were grown? Would you stay for, stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughter, for it grieveth me much for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone get out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept, and Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth claimed unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back to her people, and to her gods returned out after, her, after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to, to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee, for whither thy goes, I go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where, where thou dies, I will I die. And, where, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if I ought, but if ought, but dead part be in thee. When she saw she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. I want to show you something. We're talking about Naomi now, Naomi. She she would just say, she tried to hide her mistakes. There's some things here and here that really disturb me. First of all, the Bible says that the Bible says we read in the text we read you all ago. That God visited his faithful people in Bethlehem, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't visit his disobedient daughter there in Moab. Look at verse 6. He said, he said, he said, uh, 
And, and she rose with her daughter in law that she might return from her country of Moab, for she heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given him bread. And she ain't did it. God wasn't blessing her. God ain't gonna bless you outside his will, folks. He won't. Yeah, that's right. Naomi had heard that God had already started giving bread back to Bethlehem. They were being blessed. She'd been gone ten, over 10 years, or no, over 10 years. She heard that they were going, they were getting food and getting bread. But you know what's so bad about it? This, this is something that bothers me. It's bad that people think more, only uh, care about the blessings of God and don't experience them because they're not where they ought to be. They, she cared more about the, the, the physical aspect of it. She didn't care that she wasn't right with God. All she wanted was the bread. And I believe that's what's wrong with a lot of people tonight, Brother Mike. They want the bread. They don't want the blessings of God. Right, brother. They want this thing to satisfy their soul and their flesh, you see. Even the prophets threw out the age and preached to turn from the sin, turn from the sin, and return to God. And that's what God would, well, the lesson she should have learned here. Her decision to go back to Bethlehem was right, but her motive was wrong. I want to go back, but her motive was wrong. Her, she was, you know what? She was interested in food more than she was fellowship. That's exactly right. There ain't nothing so sweet as the fellowship in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so many people today, they say, well, they quit going to church because maybe the, God took the blessings off the life, the bread getting bread getting low, instead of coming to the one that can bless them again, they go to know him. Yeah. I said I wasn't going to be excited about this. Uh, That's the whole joy for having you. But I'll tell you, it's the truth, though. You, got, you know that. Brother Phil, if God never gave you nothing else, I could never complain. God been too good. Right. right. He had all of y'all too. Yes, sir. He went from the youngest Christian to the oldest Christian. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many desire things that gratify the flesh than they do the fellowship of God. It's saying, how would it be? I don't like to talk to nobody that don't look me in the face. You ever know somebody and they would never look you in the face? That makes you think they're trying to plot the key to go <laughs> But can you imagine praying to God and God turns back? Well, listen. Yeah. That's why you get out of fellowship in the essence. That's exactly what it is. Because David said in Psalms, he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. Won't well, hear me. Amen. So we see what happened. She was returning to the land she was born in, but she was not returning to the Lord. She was going to go back to Bethlehem, but she didn't want to go back to God. Ain't that something? People want the blessing. That's why I see so many people. You know, and I've seen it happen here at Union Baptist Church. They get in trouble with God and get in trouble financial or physical or something. They run to God, cry out to all that God takes care of them, yeah. and they couldn't give a hoot about God. They leave and go back to a whole lot of you. Amen. Amen right there. I'm going to tell you something, folks. What's up contending about? Listen to this. She told her daughter a lot. If I can find, let me read here. I can find here. She told her, said, I want you to do something. Now, you got to realize she was going to go to a place. Naomi was going to go to Bethlehem where the true God was worshipped. But here, what she told him, she said, I want you to go back to your mom and daddy, your mama's house. To those false gods. She didn't care whether they died and went to hell. She said, just go back to them. That's how her condition had got. She had lost the burden for those that she loved. And she was looking out for number one. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure I'm right. Because <laughs> she said, here. She said in verse 8, 
remember, said to a daughter, to the all law, go return each to his mother's house. The Lord dealt kindly with you as you have dealt with me, uh, with the dead and me. And she said, now go, because I ain't got more get boys left. You remember that? You realize, you got to understand what did she mean when she said, I won't have no sons for you to marry. You got to read and study about this in the Bible days. When a man would get married to a woman, if he died, by the law, his brother, he ought to marry his husband's brother that was still alive. <laughs> to keep the seed, keep, keep, keep the blood of him coming. So she was saying here. She said, I'm, not, I'm too old to have any more babies. I'm too old to conceive a child. Or I'm too old and I don't want to one. I don't know what she did. <laughs> They go back to go back to go back over there to Moab. Go back to your heathen practices. Go, and you know what? And you know what? She said, I don't, she said, I want you to go. I don't want you to go, be blessed. I just want you to get go away and go back to your own, go back to your own life you used to live. Why would she want to stay in that country for so Brother Mike? Because where false gods were worshiped. You know why? Her making that very statement, it proved, it really proved, was living proof that her and Elimelech had disobeyed God and allowed their son to marry outside the nation of Israel. And she thought, you know, if I bring that girly girl back with me to Bethlehem, they'll embarrass me. He and me being a Jewish and taking old Gentile dogs with her, she said they'll be embarrassed to me. That's what she said. Naomi was trying to cover her tracks. There's a lot of people like that tonight. Trying to cover her tracks. Rather than confess for a There's a lot of people like you say, Have y'all seen? I've seen this at Unity Daddy Church. Many times, not for y'all viewers, some of you used to come here. They get out of church, brother, feel they live like the devil. God would catch up with you, catch up with them. They come, and I know they come to church and come in church, they're like nothing's happening at all. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I had my ankle that I was told that joint would tell She said, look, <coughs> she wasn't she, she going back to get it right with God one night. Naomi was not going back to Bethlehem to get right with God. She was just going when she could get her, 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 uh, her, her desire to flesh fulfilled, which is food. And we all have to have food to die that. But see, a lot of people beat that, 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 that they'll choose the temple over the eternal things. That's what happened to you, you see. He was trying to cover up for disobedience rather than confess and repent. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, He that covers his sin shall not prosper. But the Word of God says. And she, I want you to look at verse 21. Look at verse 21. I'm going to try to I'm trying to look at it. as long as good stuff in here. Here's what she said. She blamed God for all her sorrow and misery. Look at verse 21. I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home in me, again in me. Why did he call me Naomi seed? The Lord had testified against me, and the Almighty had afflicted me. She blamed God for her trouble. Ain't that where a lot of people are? Mm -hmm. They get in trouble, and they'll blame God for it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, they get out of the will of God. Maybe a loved one died. Then they get out of church and say, God ain't taking my baby. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't got out of church. You know what it was, honey? You ain't right with God and you 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 done what you did. And don't blame God. We shouldn't blame God for our mess up, for you. That's right. She did. That's right. She said, the Lord inflicted me, looking for me, he testified against me. Yeah. She blamed God. Boy, everybody's been in, in guilty. So many people today all guilty to blame game, aren't they? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm a drunk because my mama, my daddy, my grandpa, yeah. my uncle's a drunk. Yeah. I'm a hormone because my daddy did and my grandpa. Oh, That's yeah. a bunch of foolishness, amen. You're right, please. You're right. We can't blame nobody for what we do but us. That's amen. right. Right. That's right. I had a relative a year ago. He did with that. Run around, run around, run around on his wife. All the time. He went around on her, had four or five young out of the red She stayed with him and finally she divorced him. And his son said, 
He got astray and told me he's married. He told him I was alive. I did like my daddy. I can't help. I thought my was a bunch of bull. Yeah. That's a bunch of lies. Right. Man, you just keep looking, quit looking at a woman and start looking at God. You quit get your eyes off what you ain't looking at right. that anyway, man. But look here. <coughs> look at the testament. Look what Oprah did. It's a sad thing, folks. Oprah went back to her life in Moab. They started out with Naomi, but Naomi finally persuaded Oprah to go back. Naomi even prayed the Lord may find them a new husband. Ain't that something? Perfect. She even said, I want to pray to God. First of all, God didn't know what was going to hear her anyway. How in the world you pray somebody, it goes and say, I pray God you'll find them a, a Moabite to marry. That's crazy. But she convinced Oprah to go back home, and Oprah would never heard from him again. The scriptures never mentioned Oprah again. Never did. Oprah made the wrong decision. She never mentioned. She, when she went off to sea, she never would have mentioned no more. And if she didn't get saved, trust the God of Israel, she died in the hell. Ain't that sad, folks? The tragedy in Moab. Look at the testimony of Ruth. I like Ruth. Ruth, I like Ruth. Ruth, Ruth, Ruth saw it. Amen. She said, Well, you go, I'm going to go. Hey, we go to God, that's what I do. Hey, your God's going to be my God. Amen. And then when you die, that's why I'm going to die. When you bury, that's why I'm going to be buried. She said, I'm going with you. I don't want to go back there. I believe old Ruth had already got right with God, didn't you? Amen. Because she decided she didn't want to go back that life. When you get saved, you don't want to go back that life without you. I, I, don't, Amen. I, didn't, I don't want to go back to where I was. It's been a long time that I remember how it was. I'm glad God forgave me. I don't want to go back that lifestyle. Naomi was trying to cover up. Oprah had give, given up. But Ruth was ready to stand up. She said, I'm going to go with you. I'm not going back. I'm not going to turn back, she said. She refused to listen to her mother-in-law. And she refused to go back to Moab with her dad. <coughs> you can read in verse 16, she had already come. She said, look at the latter part, she said, he said, uh, she said, I will lodge, uh, said, well, thou lodge, I will lodge, and thy people shall be my people, and thy God, and my God. You know, that shows you that she had already confessed her faith. Confess that she loved, she, she knew who God was, she called him God. And you notice when it said, when it, she talked about, uh, in verse number 16, my God, it was a capital G. That means the Almighty God. Now, if it had been a mobile God, it would be a, a, a little G. But it weren't. She said, I love you, Naomi. And I'm going to stay with you until I die. We see a happy ending, first of all. We're going to bring up, bring up some more next week. But we're about through here. <coughs> that tragedy, that's done with none of us being real careful that we don't have the tragedies in the land. Oh, yeah. Just in there. <laughs> Father, I love you. Thank you for your word, and your warnings, and your divine grace. You bless these today. Bless